Hey guys, thanks for joining us for another Maker interview. This week we had the chance to sit down with Matt Haas from Awesome Wood Things. So if you want to know a little bit more about Matt and some of the stuff going on with his channel, stick around. Hello Mr. Haas, how are you? Good Ryan, how are you? I'm thrilled Good. to be here. Thank you for having me. Good, glad to have you. Um, as we start, have started every interview, we would like to get just a little intro from you or a little bit about you. Excellent. Well, I can sum it up this way. I love being creative, and I love creative people. Very good. I like that. Yeah, like that, that. that encapsulates everything there is about me and, and my passion. Right. Creativity. It's right up front. Good. I, w I want to get dig a little deeper though, deeper, though, and go into your background. Maybe starting back in, say, high school? Cool. Yes. Okay, well... Um, there was a shop in my high school, and as I moved through the academics, I got to the point where I had all of my credits, so I decided to take a woodworking class. However, <laughs> it wasn't anything spectacular. It was technically a decorative wood carving class. <laughs> the whole semester, pretty much, or the whole class was uh, carving a duck. You know, one of those mallards that you would yeah. sit on the end table. <laughs> so, um, while that class was going on, there was another class, which was a full woodworking class. So, I used uh, the bandsaw to cut off some major pieces, and then it was all whittling, and a little bit of wood burning, and then spray lacquer. Uh, took the whole... <laughs> The whole class was basically that. Um, but I did get to see everyone else using the table saw, using the planer, using disc sanders, and this was all high-end industrial level stuff. Wow. And I was like, man, that's cool. But my little 10 minutes on the, the bandsaw was all I had, and the instructor was this short, stocky guy. He gave you three minutes of instruction and then sat back down at his uh, desk with the master red off button switch. So that was like his job. He just had to sit there and throw that switch if anything bad happened. <laughs> it was total hands off. But I, I do remember looking at all those tools and thinking, man, those those are cool. Um, so that 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 was the, the high school. I also took drafting. Now this was way back in the day. So it was a mechanical a table, you know, everything's you know, with the T-square and the pencil, and but I really liked it. I, I was like, oh, I get it, and really gravitated to, to that. And I had art class, you know, freshman yeah. through, so I was one of the, you know, full art students and eventually went to design college after, after high school. So how did design college go for you? What all did you uh, do there? Well, it, I have a um, commercial art and visual communications degree, cool. and um, yeah, so yeah, it was a kind of a multifaceted course, but it, the design, I really learned composition and design, and uh, one teacher, Mr. Kleindens, was, he was a genius. Like, some people are just so smart, but he was also um, a, a talented artist and he taught he taught you how to re what what looked good and what, what looked bad because this was a commercial application so it wasn't all oh I'm feeling this you know it was what works for advertising what you know and boy boy did I, I learn an awful lot from from him and and the whole the whole staff there so that that was a lot of fun so how did all that translate into your to your uh, to your job or your career? Well, um, after college, I got hired as a illustrator for textbooks, and this cool. was all on the computer. So, um, Adobe Illustrator has had been out at the time, and I studied on Illustrator eighty eight. Like that was the version number, which was the year. Oh, wow. <laughs> that, that's how <laughs> so early software companies would make the mistakes of putting the version as the year, then they stopped doing it because um, you could tell how old your product is. Right. <laughs> so, you know. <laughs> um, but yeah, so um, I did textbook illustrations and quickly went 
the ranks into supervisor and then manager and I was even moonlighting on the side as an instructor for Illustrator Photoshop at the time there was um, Quark Express it was a page layout program um, so I did a pre-press class it was all intro intermediate advanced classes that I basically put together myself when I taught um, adults in the evening so I got really good at the desktop publishing tools cool. and um, and uh, as as the full-time job went and I got more responsibilities doing boring stuff like HR, payroll, tracking vacations, accounts uh, receivable. I'm like, this isn't creative. <laughs> <laughs> so I just, I automated everything. I taught myself development, like programming, and um, just, I wanted everything to just run push button. And by the time I, I knew it, the whole production process was completely tracked from beginning to end, people would check things out, and the whole point was do all this smart coding stuff just so I could spend more time being creative. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I moved up into, um, eventually, um, the media became part of education where it wasn't just books. Right. So uh, I went from CD-ROMs to DVDs to online media, and then as time went on, it was more about tracking the assets, the metadata, the captions, the, the keywords. So I became a content expert and cool. um, so did some of that. And eventually I got hooked into some of the standards bodies. Um, the standards bodies that governs the EPUB file format. That's, you know, uh, the, the root format of like Kindle or right. any of that. And, um, also, the W3C, the World Wide Web Consortium, I, I sat on that as a contributing member. And, really? Oh, yeah. Cool. Oh, I'm an uber geeky web development nerd through <laughs> and that? through. And, uh, oh, my God, those people were so smart. I'm talking, like, intelligence off the charts. They were just, and from all over the world, these were global um, committees that, that govern this, you know, you go to the website, you put in a, you, you put in an address, you hit return and you start interacting with the web page. Someone figures out how all that happens behind the scenes. And, um, yeah, so it was fun. It was one time I got to tell the story. So they were like, okay, we want to meet somewhere central. So people from Asia and America and, and, and Europe can, can all come together. And they were thinking, oh, the West coast somewhere. And the guy from Google says, well, I could get a I could get a uh, conference room at Google. I, I quick came off a hold. I'm like, yes, yes, I agree. Let's go to Google. <laughs> so I was invited to uh, one of the Google offices in Irvine and spent a day there working with uh, some of the Googlers and some of the other contributing members of, of the group we were in. And I got to see inside of Google. It was so cool. <laughs> this ticket behind me, uh, there's a little... Uh, frame hanging on the wall yeah. that was my pass that was the pass oh. they printed out when i went into the facility <laughs> i kept putting cool. my briefcase and framed it so yeah uber geek you know and uh, uh expert at the desktop publishing tools especially the line art tools like adobe illustrator mm -hmm. love the stuff love the stuff cool all right let's transition a little bit here um how did woodworking start for you well, you know, as a homeowner, I bought some tools, some, a drill and a little um, circular saw. It was all battery operated. I did little odd jobs and I started to slap stuff together with just butt joints and screws. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, this is kind of cool. And I bought a couple more tools and I'm like, you know, at the time I'm thinking, Okay, when I buy computer stuff, like when I buy a mouse, like it's obsolete in a couple years yeah. or breaks down and it's very expensive. These things are like 80, 90 bucks. But like when you buy like a, a bigger circular saw, I think it was like 45 bucks. I'm like, that tool's going to sit on my shelf probably the rest of my life. And it was so cheap compared to, you know, the computer peripherals. I'm like, oh, there's something, there's something to this. And uh, um, so I just started tinkering more and more. And I was, I kind of got to a point where I'm like, you know, 
have this rinky dink little table, like a bench top table saw, like the crappiest one you can have. And I was trying to do stuff with that. And I was just thinking back, man, if I could only go back to my high school and use some of that equipment, I'm like, how cool would that be? And I'm thinking, wait a minute. I think really good. Should I even ask? I mean, for the liability, I'm like, why would they even say yes? And I was a school director. I was elected to the school board here. So I, I, I'm just like, wait a minute. I'm an adult and I have disposable income. I can buy my own tools. <laughs> so I started rating Craigslist and every tool I have is used and I don't buy it unless it's 50% off or less. So all with the exception of a few tools, um, all Craigslist. And it's, I eventually got to the point where I had like one of each tool. So whatever operation I wanted to do, I could do it. Now they may be little bench top tools, but I mean, it's covered, you know. Now I have to replace the tools with <laughs> higher end versions. But it's, it's once you get to the point where you've got everything, it's just a whole other world. I, it's 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 much more enjoyable because you're not sweating it. Right. You're not limited. I don't like to be limited by anything. Right, because it sucks when you have a vision and you get ready to do something. You're like, oh, I I can't do that. Oh yeah, so the it's... edging, the edging treatment. I can't do that. So yeah, yeah. no, yeah. yeah. I'm really happy with the place that I'm at. The tools that I have and my basement workshop. It's really working. I'm, I'm fortunate. All right, would you like to give us any more thoughts on woodworking in general? Well, you know, man, when I jumped in, I jumped all in. I started consuming everything on YouTube. I was like, oh, that's how that's done. Oh, that makes sense. That's how you do that. I just consumed oh, it all, and it was awesome. Yeah, wood, wood is an amazing substance. I know this is going to sound corny, but wood it's it's cheap sometimes it's free it's easy to work with it's yeah. much softer compared to other materials you can hack pieces off you mm -hmm. can grind pieces off it holds its shape really well it's a great medium to funnel all of my creative passion and you know unlike web development when I spend hours and weeks and months building mission critical plant management systems from the ground up with PHP all handwritten code. When I go to another website or I turn the computer off, poof, all my work disappears. Mm. But not woodworking, when I build something physical, it remains whether the computer's on or off and that odd little quirky <laughs> fact is just it resonates with me I spent my career doing coding so it's it's something I really enjoy building something it doesn't go away it's it's always right. there I love the craft I love the community I mean this is the best community on the internet I mean think about it sometimes the internet can be a cesspool of negativity and just all kinds of problems not with the maker community people are there to help you they encourage you they challenge you they call you out in a good way it's no no issues with that and I always see myself embracing the community I'm, I'm a people person I I won't be like some youtubers that just kind of shut down and they just put their stuff out and it's a one-way funnel I, no 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 I want to put back as much or more than I'm taking out of the community and highlighting creative people. And <clears throat> I love it. Right. See, so I haven't met a, be a bad person yet. No, 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 no. I really well, super yeah. kind and super helpful. It's amazing. All right. Um, what kind of things inspire you? What, what gets you fired up? Oh, well, first of all, I am a geek through and through. Uh, geek. The word geek, that's a term of endearment in my household. Nothing wrong with, with being a, a geek. It's not derogatory. Right. Um, you know, I, I like retro video games. I mean, when I was very young, like very young, I had a paper route. I'd take those $10, $20 I got from the paper route and ride my bike to the arcade. I'd play all the coin-op games. I love them. 
Um, so, um, yeah, video game, big, big video game, especially the older. Now, I did, did some other stuff with Halo and whatever, yeah. but uh, I, I like the 8-bit the pixels, man. Uh, sci-fi, big sci-fi buff, um, especially, you know, like the Star Wars, the Star Trek, the Battlestar Galactica. Uh, you just, if it's a big, plausible story with, like, science that seems like it could be real yeah. <laughs> i i just get lost in yeah. in that stuff i love it pop culture you know daft punk is a cool band i really oh, like cool. I didn't know that. <laughs> oh yeah yeah although you know i am an 80s hair bands mm -hmm. fan as well but i mean just something about that genre and i think daft punk's doing something <laughs> something right <laughs> their stuff's really expensive too like t-shirts are like 40 dollars oh wow mm. Oh, uh, the beer, wine, and spirits. You know, I'm 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 a whiskey drinker. I love you know making whiskey inspired stuff and um, uh, Rocky Horror. Huge Rocky Horror Picture Show fan. So there's uh, that is inspired me. You know, just I I love it. You know, geeky geek culture, geek pop culture. I'm all there. That's that's what really gets me going. Cool. All right, anybody that's seen your channel, I know I've noticed, uh, you do some CNC projects, so what are your thoughts on CNC? I, I love the machine. I, I actually, you know, uh, I think I'm one of, uh, I'm a small demograph demographic of, of person that really is ideal for the CNC machine, uh, particularly because of the line art expertise I have. Mm. Uh, I'm an expert in Adobe Illustrator, and those files can translate into the card files for the machine. Right. So um, I'm all about, you know, building my own designs or, or working with my own art and moving it into into that space. Um, and you know, for anyone that goes into any type of computer-controlled tool. Mm -hmm be it a laser cutter or a CNC carver. If you think you're just going to download a file, press a button, and have everything come out perfect, that's, that's not, that is not <laughs> the experience you, you will have. I mean, you know, a lot of the traditional stuff you would do with regular tools is up front with the CNC. You do it in the computer and you do your planning there. And then, you know, you've got to set it up properly, you've got to have your material set up properly, and you've got to choose the right settings and sanding. <laughs> Hello! <laughs> there is sanding involved with CNC work, believe me, so you're not getting out of that. <laughs> no way around sanding um, ever. No, no. So, um, I love the CNC as a tool. I think it is a real tool. I know there's a, a fight on the internet community oh, yeah. over that, but, you know... Um, so I've got some big plans with with that tool, which I bought. I mean, a lot of people were given CNC machines for a while. Not me, though. I actually, it's one of the only two tools I've actually paid for and didn't get off Craigslist. Um, but um, yeah, I, I, I want to, I think I got my machine finally dialed in where um, the precision is where it needs to be because it wasn't, as precise as I thought it was out of the box. It took oh, really? some, yeah, it took some tweaking. Um, the bed wasn't flat with the, with the bit, so it was, it was, carving one distance on the one side and got deeper on the other. So I figured that out, and I I changed the settings to where the the motors have a little more power, but not too much power. Right. It's kind of one of those things where it has to be. It can't be too much, nor can it be too little. So some people just crank it all up, and that's not good either. Um, so yeah, um, really got that kind of figured out. And gears, I want to get into kinetic sculptures. Is oh. kind of the catchphrase. Cool. I've I've seen those wooden clocks yes. where most people do it by hand, but I think you can pull it off on the CNC too. I've just something about having something be accurate telling time uh, like it like a week or two it'll lose like one minute with wood wood right. as the medium not like you know 
steel or some other metal that's very, very accurate. Wood, you can get something to tell time that's that accurate in that medium. I, I'm, I'm going to move into that eventually. Cool. And when I do, it's going to be big. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be art, you know, art on the wall. That's that's moving. That's that's the end goal. That's that's what I have. That'd be to get awesome. To. Ah, yeah, yeah. I've, I've got big plans. <laughs> <laughs> All right, um, woodworking top videos. What's yeah. going on with that? <laughs> well, you know, I um, I. I'm all about creativity, as I said. So I wanted to highlight creative people being creative in in you know the space that i love i love so much mm -hmm. and so that that was the whole point of that it got uh, it got kind of difficult kind of quick um <laughs> you know with all of the back end stuff you have to do with getting all the playlists ready and contact it 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 was a challenge i'm i'm not i'm not sure if that will continue or not. Um, I know, I know. Maybe I can get some feedback from the community <laughs> and get, give, give, me, give me some advice. Um, you know, the, the summer months just kind of yeah. blew up for me. Um, yeah, maybe over the winter. I don't know, what do you think? And if I do, if I do jump back into it, I, I could really use some advice, not tech advice. I mean, I right. get, I know what buttons to push and I, I know what the different services can do to help you kind of grow. I need sort of like high level business advice and just how to integrate that right. into your life and kind of make it, make it all work. Yeah, because so. for a while you were running it once a week. Yeah. And yeah. I can only I got, imagine the amount of work that has to go into that. Just, yeah, it was. I, I, I mean, know. I know because we did something similar to that for just a short while, and I was just like, I don't have time for that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So we'll you see. Did great um, with it though. Thank you, yeah. thank you. So community, let me know your thoughts on that. I will, I will seriously consider it, and um, who knows? So we'll, we'll see. Yeah, definitely. We'll see. Yeah. Okay. What about your, just your channel as a whole? What's the future of that look like? You know, more projects for sure. Um, I, I'm doing some collabs, Ooh. so you'll you'll see a collaboration uh, hit hit the channel here soon, hopefully. And, oh, we don't um, even get a teaser of who it's with. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'm doing it with uh, Wood by Right. Oh, so. cool. Yeah, yeah. He's uh, of course doing all hand tools and just. Uh, giving himself such a huge amount of work with what we're doing it's it's yeah, everything's times 10 yeah. the labor <laughs> but it's gonna be it's gonna be so cool and it's it's 8-bit video game uh related so yeah, that's cool we're actually talking to him in next week i think we're gonna be ah, interviewing him that's very cool okay Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. You heard it here first yeah. on the White Light Creations, the, yeah, the Clever Current channel. Sweet. Yeah, baby. Yeah. <laughs> See, you're 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 breaking news here, Ryan. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Uh, that you know, uh, future of the channel. You know, um, uh, more more stuff with the epoxies. I've got some glow in the dark stuff, and I've got some. Uh, stuff that fluoresces you know so you hit it with a black light and it just stays so i'm gonna do some, some cool stuff with that gears as i said um you, you know just more awesome geeky stuff it's got to be geeky and it's got to be awesome and boy oh oh i've got some good stuff in the works so <laughs> <laughs> i really do <laughs> <sighs> All right, I want to know, I've been asking everybody this so far, what is your favorite tool? CNC machine. CNC machine? The CNC I kinda carver. Figured. Yeah, I kind of figured yeah, after yeah. I've been talking for a while. Although, you know, I, I you also got to give it to the table saw. I mean, the table oh, saw is yeah. the center of every shop. And I'm to the point where I, I can't touch the chop saw, you know, the, the, the miter saw. It's just not accurate enough. Right. It, uh, the, 
I deal with small crafts, you know, I'm not a mm -hmm. big furniture type of builder, and um, for small crafts, that does, the micro box is just, I don't know, maybe I got a crappy one, I don't know. But. Oh, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know if I've ever used it to make a precision cut. I usually uh, I, just use it to shorten something and then clean it up on the table saw. I was I was putting together a humidor. I bought all premium equipment and it with you know I I I put the, the thin wood the veneers on the side. It was all high end stuff and that freaking miter box. <laughs> it just it, the, the angles weren't lining up. I'm like, that's it. I'm not touching it again. <laughs> so I need to cut some two by fours for something. I'm slapping together. I'll use it. But no. Yeah. Oh but yeah. But I, I do love the CNC and I think if you if you have the ability to create the line art yourself and not just download stuff from the internet I think you can really take that to another level all right um, since you're a people person and you love other people are there any channels or other YouTube creators you'd like to shout out or maybe let other people know about I hesitate to answer this question because I have a very long list way too long for the scope of this interview and of course people are going to be left off but I can give you a few of the people that have inspired me just to give you a taste of what what that is and you'll notice the theme of creativity is in all of of these people but again there's many many more than this my subscription list is multiple hundreds <laughs> but we'll start off with Kyle Toth ah oh, this guy is on a whole different level. I, I love everything about his channel. Of course, he's very creative. He's a skilled craftsman. His tools, his shop, I mean, even the life he's living, it's just, yes, that's how you do it. <laughs> so, Kyle, big inspiration. Uh, of course, Jimmy Diaresta and his tips videos, he has about a half a dozen or so videos on a specific tool or specific techniques. Just those videos in his vast archive of awesomeness is enough to put him way above everyone else. Every moment of those videos is chock full of great techniques and safety. He could package that and sell it at a premium and I wouldn't yeah. mind paying for it. I mean, that's that's just awesome. And Jocko whatever. My man, Jocko. This is a guy. Okay, so creative. Again, he's, he's, I could just tell whatever he wants in his head comes out in what he's making, oh, yeah. you know, and it's, 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 ex I could, it could almost sense it's exactly what he wanted. You know, it's not any different. <laughs> and so I've, I've, I really like it. And the cinematography of right. his videos are just out of this world. Um, Bob Claggett from I Like to Make Stuff. He, you know, just the range of stuff that he does in his shop. And, right. you know, some of the wacky ideas too. Just all around, all around good stuff. And he's so descriptive about the stuff he makes. Yeah, he's very yeah. good about taking you step by step through what he does. He's Love dialed it, it in with uh, with dialogue and visuals, and yeah. uh, he's got it really working. I mean, there's no one right answer, but his right. his delivery, I think, is spot spot on. Right. Um, now, here's here's one that doesn't publish as often as some of those other. Steve Carmichael. Oh yeah. Ah, uh, my thoughts on Steve is, you know, he's looks like the happiest person on the planet. I mean, just he could just be talking and just say anything. You could tell that's one happy guy. Right. Like he is he is psyched to be in his shop. He is psyched to be building whatever he's building and I I try to have I try to mirror some of his stuff in in my own big inspiration. Yeah. Because, you know, if you could tell if he got tired or bored with something, he'd just he wouldn't deal with it, <laughs> so only the only the, so I, I he's a huge inspiration for me. Jay Bates, you know Jay yeah. is a big a big uh, uh, influence because I, I like him. He does a lot of the larger projects, which yeah. I tend to do some of the smaller crafts. So I'm like, oh wow, did you see that thing? You know? <laughs> and you know he's very accurate with his stuff yeah. too, which you know I I try and be really accurate with my stuff. And uh, Lar Camp. From, from Germany. Mm -hmm. When she 
hit YouTube, it just it took off, and I'd like to think it was her creativity. You know, oh, yeah. These people, they're true artists that are working in this medium, and yeah. that's what. And you know, again, I there's so many other people that I could just go on and oh, on yeah. about, but I think you know everyone else on my playlist is kind of fits that group of of ins inspired people it, and you know so that's that's what I look for Cr if you're creative and you're entertaining and there's good cinematography I'm there oh yeah I'm there and so that's I've taken little bits of, of all of, of those creative and many many others and tried to uh, put that in my own in my own work and uh, I'm having a blast oh yeah I really really am love I love the space I love the community I love the hobby I love this uh, and, you know, everything so having a blast and we can if it wasn't fun, if it wasn't fun for me I, yeah. I wouldn't do What'd it what would be the point right yeah yeah and I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna try and keep it hobby you know I don't think I want it as a business I don't think yeah. you know I put a few things on Etsy and I've I, I did partner with a um, an Etsy seller here in my town. She does um, name art, so like wall hangings with initials and names. And she got tired of buying the same old letters from Michaels and other craft stores. Right. So I'm like, I have every letter under the sun available to me. I have my you know I have you know tools I can use to make large letters, and I've got CNC machines I can so. I've, I've been working with her and so there's several dozen pieces out there that have the, the letters that I create or the, the backdrop, you know, sometimes the plaques. She needs some funky shapes with the cool edging and stuff like that. Oh, so cool. I partner with her. Uh, it's uh, her shop's Name Pop. If you go to Etsy and search Name Pop, that's her aerial frame mm. check. So a lot, of my, a lot of my stuff is in her stuff. Yeah. <laughs> so. Um, doing that too but that's about as commercial as I'm gonna get right. now, I'm not dealing with anybody I sell to her and she resells my stuff right. that works right. <laughs> so uh, all, right. all right well that's about all we got but before we're done where can people find you online a uh, couple places um, Facebook so awesome with things on Facebook Twitter awesome WT for awesome with <laughs> things um, I do have an Instagram, which is a mix of personal stuff and woodworking. That's Matthew Haas Geek, M A T T H G W two A's in the last name H A A S Geek. Matthew Haas Geek. That's the one. Instagram and you know a few other places here and, and there, obviously but. on YouTube under Awesome yeah. Wood Things. Awesome Wood Things. Um, I'll of course I'll link to all these in the description or show notes for the podcast. But other than that, this has been fun. I learned a lot about you that I didn't know. Excellent. Thanks for having me on. Had an awesome time. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Matt. All right. Thanks, Ryan. Take care. You too. So, guys, we hope you enjoyed that interview with Matt. If you did, make sure you subscribe to our channel. We'll have interviews out like this every week or every couple weeks or something like that. And if you want to see more interviews, make sure you check the playlists associated with this show. And you can also check it out on the podcast, which you can find on our website or a link in the description. As always, guys, thanks for stopping by, and we'll see you next time.